Hello everyone, welcome to another video of my YouTube channel. Uh, if you like this video, the information that I'm going to provide in the next slide, so please subscribe my YouTube channel. Uh, today we will be talking about risk responsive strategies in project management. In our routine lives, risk could be risk is all the negative events. We usually term all the negative events as risk. But from the project management point of view, as you can see in the bullet point one, a project risk is an uncertain event that may or may not occur during a project, which can affect the project either positively or negatively. So what does it mean? There is an uncertainty in the future which might affect our project. As we know, our projects have uh, multiple constraints. If one of them is harmed, it means that there might be changes to the project scope, there might be changes to the project, project cost, or maybe any other uh, constraints that we have defined for our project. So any event harming one of those constraints, or even the project itself, that it, sh it could be terminated as a result of that event, those events are called risks. So risks can come in both negative and positive ways. The negative way risk is called threat and the positive risk is called opportunity. In the second bullet point, as you can see, risk is the uncertainty that matters. One project's risk might not be risk to another project. What does it mean? There are a lot of things about the future we can say Everything about the future is almost uncertain. We know nothing about the future. But there might be events that we foresee as risks to our projects. So the events that are important to us and our project, those are risks for us. But other projects might not see them as risks because that project might not be located at that specific location where the risk is going to occur and so many other examples we can give. Risks are recorded in a risk register. I'm going to show you how a risk register looks like in the next slide, and if you guys wanted to have that template, please don't hesitate to write down your email in the comment section so I can share it with you. Uh, so risks are recorded in the risk register along with their names, of owners, expected date of occurrence, and other detail, details specific to each company. Each company has its specific uh, standards which they follow and specific templates which they follow, so their risk registers might look different. But the data, the contents are almost the same for all organizations. So let's go to the next slide and see how does a risk register look like. I have prepared this spreadsheet uh, of a risk register. This is how a risk register usually looks like. You have a project name here, you have the project ID. In companies, in big corporations, when they have a lot of projects, so they have to categorize their, they have to categorize their projects. That's why they have the project ID and all. So you have to assign a specific project ID to each project, so you can differentiate it with another project in the corporation. Next is the name of the project manager and planned completion date of the project. There might be other things you want to add as per your company's requirements here. The next you can see here we have the ID, ID of each risk. I have just numbered them. You can use your own yeah, customized ID, IDs the way you like it. Risk description, for example you're going to describe your risk, what is it, Risk trigger. Trigger means they are the first signs which are going to appear uh, due to which the risk is going to happen. So when you see the triggers, it means that the risk is nearby and it's at the corner, it might happen any moment. Risk owner. You know, the, each risk is assigned to a specific person in the project management or project team so they can take care of that risk. Expected date, so you have an expected date for the risk when it's going to happen. And prob probability of the risk. Is it high? Is it moderate? It's, is it low? And all of them. And you can show also the impact of the risk. 
If that risk happens, what will be the impacts? Will it highly impact, significantly impact our project? Will the uh, effects of the risk will be moderate or low? Here you can show it like this. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating this. If you wanted the specific format for risk register, please do not hesitate to write down your email in the comment section so I can share this with you. And planned response. What are you planning? What's, what are the, 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 the list of actions that are you are going to take in response to the specific risk? And how much is that risk response going to cost you? So this is how usually, as I said, a risk register looks like. But every organization is different, projects are unique, so the risk registers might be different as per every organization as well. In the next slide, we will talk about the risk responses. We divide project risks into two parts, into two categories. The first one is the positive risks, which are going to, to affect the project or impact the project positively, and which are called opportunities. And the second one is threats. These risks, the threats, they, they impact the project negatively. So the strategies that we have for both of them, I have, I have written them down here, for opportunities, we have exploit, we have share, we have enhance, we have accept. And for threats, we have avoid, transfer, mitigate, and accept. So I have brief definitions of all of them here. Exploit means that to make sure that the risk happens or the positive risk happens, the opportunity happens. There's something you foresee that could happen which will impact your project positively, which, 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 which will improve a part of your project. So you do things and actions to make sure that that opportunity shows up and you take it. Second one is share. It means to team up with a partner to ensure the opportunity happens. For example, there's a big project announced for bidding and your company can cover some part of the project, and there's another company who can complete the rest of the project. So what you two guys do, the two companies come together, they joint venture for the project and bid for the project. Once they win it, both of the companies will be positively affected by that opportunity. And hence, focusing on things that will guarantee occurrence of the opportunity. What does this mean? There are some things, as we, as, we, as we showed in the previous slide, the triggers. There are some triggers. If you work on them, if you improve them, it will guarantee an opportunity for you. So what you do as a project manager or a project management team, you work on those specific things to make an opportunity happen. And the last one is accept. When, once there is an opportunity on your way, and you will bump into it in the future, you do not think about it, you just go and take that opportunity. For the negative risks or threats, the risk responses are avoid, transfer, mitigate, and accept. They're very much, very much uh, clear from their names. As you can see, avoid, the organization act to overcome the threat or protect the project from its impacts. What does this mean? For example, uh, there, is, there is a strong wind, a thunder or something is expected, a specific uh, part of your project's timeline, and if it happens, it will negatively affect your project. So what you do, you don't work at that specific time. You stop your project works until that risk goes away. So this means avoiding the risk. Transfer the risk. By transfer, we mean to shift the impact of the risk to a third party. We all are uh, familiar with the name insurance. There are a lot of insurance companies around. So what companies do, if they foresee any risks for their projects, they buy insurance for that specific part of their project. So what happens when the risk happens, they have already insured their project against that risk. And so the third party, the insurance company, is going to pay the price for the risk. The third one is mitigate the risk. It's to reduce the probability or impact 
of the threat of the negative risk. So if, if you expect, if you forecast a risk in the future, what you do, you take some measures to reduce its probability so it doesn't happen and its impact. If it happens, it does not affect your project significantly or remarkably. And the last one is accept. There are some cases that you cannot do anything about the risk. So what you do is you just go into it and take that risk. That's called accepting the risk. If this slide, if this presentation was useful and you guys learned something from it, please do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel.